What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. Every Tuesday morning, put out our waiver wire video, which is this. Alas, you have landed upon the waiver wire film for week 10 fantasy football. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Let you know when we drop these bad boys. Like we're fucking Jamar Chase. Uncalled for Jamar Chase has been pretty good this year. So this week, not a crazy, crazy week for waivers, but we do have four teams on by. Got the Bengals, speaking of Mr. Jamar Chase. So that means you will be without Burrow, Chase, Higgins, Mixon, and Boyd. You will be without Chicago. So you won't be without anybody. You'll be without Justin Fields. If you're in a super flex league, Dave Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, depending on what happened last night, I still think it's Khalil Herbert's backfield for at least last night, but probably Demont's once shit is over because they got the bye. The New York Giants, so you got a whole mess of shit. I don't, I'm not even going to start to try to predict who's going to be playing next week, but Saquon should be back. And Houston, so again, another team where you're not missing anybody. You got four teams on bye, which means a lot of players, again, need to be filled in to your lineup. We release a in-depth waiver wire article and fab spend guidance article exclusive to our membership site on bdge.store bdge.store forward slash community on there you'll get our waiver wire guidance article only goes there you'll get our weekly rankings which only goes there you'll get access to our discord and the q and assault which is you know the sit star q a that happens every saturday you'll get access to the discord which allows you to join bdge dynasty leagues in the off season when you organize them shits for y'all a lot of fun bdg.store forward slash community if you just want to stop listening to me and go get the real thing so i'm ready to jump into it we must as always tuck our shirts in Stop yelling, Lizzie. All right, we're going to start with not the quarterback position because we only play super flex leagues and, uh, and there's going to be no quarterbacks available on the waiver wire. Running backs. First up on the list, uh, mo almost all of these have to do with injuries. Devin Singletary, I'm not necessarily even saying he's the top pickup, but he could be for this week, just a one-week rental, because Zach Moss is going to be in the concussion protocol, and we know based off science and mathematics that usually 70 to 80% of players that go into the concussion protocol are able to clear protocol by the following week. following week, however, presents a juicy matchup between the Bills and the Jets, all right? And this should have been a juicy matchup between the Jags. The Josh Allen game's going to be fucking infamous because of Chris Hansen. I said in the live stream... Yesterday, you know, I wish I loved anything in my life as much as Chris Hansen liked talking about that Josh Allen matchup yesterday. It was it was borderline just like felt like I was living in the metaverse when he kept saying it. They're playing the Jets next week, which means it should be really good game script for running backs. If Zach Moss is out, we've known this has operated as a committee. Devin Singletary had seven receptions in this run. All right. So I expect him to get the majority of the running work, which, you know, that might equate to like 11 carries for 43 yards, but probably five to six dump offs. So he could be a nice little fill in for your flex spot if you have guys like Mixon or Herbert or Montgomery or whoever uh, on a buy in this upcoming week. So I like Devin Singletary a little bit. Jordan Howard, hard not to like him after this game. 17 carries, 70 yards, 71 yards, whatever, and a touchdown on the ground. He only played on 41% of the snaps. Boston Scott actually out snapped him. So that is something to keep an eye on. He outproduced him, but Boston Scott outproduced him last week. They're splitting goal line carries. Even Kenny Gainwell got a goal line carry. So right now, I guess Jordan Howard seems to be the guy that you want to own most in this backfield, but it's hard to trust really any of them because his offense just, I don't know. It's weird, man. It's inconsistent. It's hard to trust. I mean, I guess they get a lot of goal line opportunities. So Jordan Howard is, it seems like he's the clear goal line back. Seems like he's going to get as many touches as Boston Scott is. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's going to be one of those things where I feel like each week is, is kind of a different story, depending on how the game script plays out philadelphia plays the denver broncos next week the saints after that so that's a really tough matchup and then by the time they play the giants and the jets after that i feel like there's a good chance that miles sanders is probably back from his injury and then it fucks everything up so we have jordan howard i really like demonta freeman as a pickup this week man Devonta freeman played really well on sunday and as you can see by this chart he out snapped bell and tyson williams by a ton 30 routes run Le'Veon bell five tyson williams 12 he got three targets zero for the other backs i uh, also uh, carried the other guys 6.1 yards per carry 
looked explosive, looked good. He looked shifty, man. He just looks like a little bit of the old Devonta Freeman, man. And that, that was unexpected. I think he looked good on the Giants last year, but he runs too hard to have like a big workload. And now he's, you know, getting a normal workload and he looks pretty damn good on it. Getting at least splitting the goal line carries, getting you know, targets in the red zone. So they play on Thursday night and Latavius Murray has been out with the high ankle sprain. Some people thought he might be back this week, but he didn't get a single practice in last week, which tells me that he's pretty far off from returning. And since they play Thursday night against the Dolphins, which is a beautiful matchup, very little chance Latavius Murray returns, which means Freeman is the RB1 again for the Ravens. All right. So I think he could be a high end flex play, if not an RB2 uh, in your lineups for week 10. So I really like Devonta Freeman. The last two backs on this list, which are for deeper leagues, depend on injuries as well. So you have Brandon Bolden, who we have Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, both dealing with the possible concussion protocol. We actually haven't heard any updates on either of these two. So keep a, keep a close eye out for that. It'll be in the pecking order. Like you still want Damian Harris as the guy. Ramondre Stevenson will rise to be probably the top pickup this week if Damian Harris is in the concussion protocol and eventually gets ruled out. You want Ramondre Stevenson. He's shown a three-down skill set, super involved in the passing game. But if both of those guys somehow end up in the concussion protocol and miss the game, Brandon Bolden comes in because he had eight carries, which wasn't that many fewer than Ramondre or Damian Harris in this game. He seems like the next man up and any down of the field for the Pats. He's also a good pass catcher, as we've seen. So Ramondre Stevenson, Brandon Bolden, keep a very close eye on the practice reports. If they're in the protocol, again, 70 to 80% of players clear the protocol for the next week of games. Chase Edmonds will not be clearing any sort of protocol. Has a high ankle sprain. Suffered it really early on. James Conner went absolutely fucking nuts. Eno Benjamin, though. Eno Benjamin went super scion on his touchdown run. It was one of the most beautiful touchdown runs I've seen in quite some time. I really like Eno Benjamin coming at Arizona State. He's a guy, he might be a little bit on the smaller side, but he he presents a three-down skill set, very similar to Chase Edmonds, very similar to a skill set of like Aaron Jones, who's like undersized, but he's got burst to him. He's got shiftiness to him, and he can catch the ball really well. Uh, Eno Benjamin played well in this game. I think he went like nine for 43 in a touchdown, but go watch his touchdown run if you haven't seen it. He absolutely laid this man out. He put him straight into a coffin. One of his teammates, there would have been a sick celebration if one of his teammates ran over and immediately like closed the coffin door on the guy on the ground. That would have been the most disrespectful, but like the most respect worthy fucking move of all time if he pulled that shit on him. But Eno Benjamin's a guy that should be picked up in most leagues just because he might play a role at a, at a lesser level to Chase Edmonds where, I mean, we already saw Chase Edmonds kind of coming down the totem pole on the carries where there were some games he was getting like five carries to James Conner's 12, 15. Now James Conner is going to take over as a three down workhorse, of course. But, you know, we might see, Eno get involved in the passing game where he catches three, four, five passes and maybe a little bit of room for growth in, in the in the ground game. So I really like, you know, Benjamin just as a player. So I like the upside because I know what he is in terms of skill set. He's the last guy on this list for the running backs. We got wide receivers, not an exciting group at all. We have Elijah Moore started off on fire Thursday night football, uh, eight target seven catches 84 yards two touchdowns these were his first receiving touchdowns of the season this was his first like real breakout game of the season there was no Corey davis who might return this week might return next week don't really know uh they were also down 28 to 10 at halftime so they were in catch-up mode basically the entire second half it, it was good to see that it was a good game obviously you'd rather see that than not we see a lot of rookies break out over the second half of the year so maybe this is it for elijah moore so i think he definitely deserves to be rostered i don't know what's really going to happen davis has been like the one when it comes to the possession receiver in this offense so very likely elijah moore falls back into suit once davis is back but it's kind of anyone's guess as to, as to what's going to happen in this offense moving forward mike white's the quarterback next week a lot of check downs could be good for elijah moore but could be good for jameson crowder as well speaking of different slot wide receivers like mr jameson crowder we've got mr hunter renfro who is an obvious obvious ad now with henry Ruggs henry rugs out he's probably already owned in your league especially if you're in a ppr league which is like where he's valuable but another big game nine more targets seven catches 49 yards and a tugger now he does not have a single game this year with fewer than five targets he has double digit ppr points in every single game except one this year his floor is really high his ceiling just is nowhere. It's like you're standing in a room where you can't jump or you're going to give yourself a fucking conk, getting conked up. He's like I said yesterday, he's, he's Cole Beasley condensed in terms of the range of outcomes on a weekly basis because he doesn't have a high ceiling, but he has a really high floor. Hunter Renfro is an interesting ad if you need a flex fill-in, but like I'm not getting too, too excited about him. Darren Waller is going to benefit from this. They're bringing Deshaun Jackson in who I'm not picking up. He'll probably see like three, four targets a game, but still there. He's still going to make an impact. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones made an impact this week. He caught like a 60-yard touchdown from Baker. Baker threw the ball like 20 times in this game, which is going to be probably the case going forward in a lot of games because they're just going to rely on Nick Chubb to eat up the opponents, break them down, put them in a shotgun shell. That's what Nick Chubb's about, man. 
and Baker. Baker looked better without Odell, man. It ain't hard to say now. Um, but Donovan Peoples-Jones is the clear wide receiver two in this offense now, not Rashard Higgins behind Jarvis Landry, which means basically he's the number one on the outside because Landry is a slot wide receiver. So there will be some big games from Donovan Peoples-Jones. It's kind of like I look at Peoples-Jones as I do like Van Jefferson. You know, he'll have his big plays down the stretch, but really, really difficult to get a grasp on like when to actually start him. So I'm going to need some more consistency outside of like one big play downfield at a DPJ before I get you know, actually, actually excited about this guy. Who are the, what other wide receivers can we talk about? I mean, Brandon Ayuk's pro I mean, Brandon Ayuk might've been dropped in your league. I would definitely pick him back up after what we saw on Sunday. He looked phenomenal. There wasn't an, an ailing Debo Samuel, even though Debo played like 92% of the snaps. Uh, Ayuk played 93% of them. So they were both right next to each other. Debo probably was still suffering from the calf. So it wasn't at full strength. But if we see anything near what we saw on Sunday from Ayuk, which was, you know, big chunks of possession, plays scored the touchdown uh you'll be able to use them for sure in your starting lineup i'm not getting too excited because we just saw an eight game streak of unusable weeks from Ayuk. so that was that was shitty uh rashad bateman's definitely not available in your league that's probably it's at the running back situation i think from tennessee i'd still hold on to adrian peterson he led the backfield in carries with 10 deonta foreman looked pretty good with seven uh jeremy nichols only got five he was like the third down back but the titans get a much easier slate of games going forward and i mean like the Rams are one of the toughest matchups against for running backs, <clears throat> except for next week where they get New Orleans. So that's another week where I'm not starting any of the Tennessee running backs, but they get Houston the week after that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a really big game at Adrian Peterson in week 11. So if you could, if you could, if you could, if you could, I know it's a luxury at this point to get past the bye weeks. I would hold on to AP for one more week because I think he'll be worth it in week 11, the tight end position. I mean, you have the usual names. You have the Dan Arnolds who shouldn't be on your wire anymore. Those kind of guys, but Two guys to note, Logan Thomas and Dawson Knox. Both guys that were very good over the first, you know, five, six weeks of the season. Both of them should be really close to return, if not if not this upcoming week, the week after that. So if you've got a bench spot for a guy like Dawson Knox, who is like legitimately a top five tight end, and basically this is why Cole Beasley's doing so well, because Dawson Knox has been out. If you got room for, for D Knox, run that shit. Uh, I would take him over Logan Thomas, but Logan Thomas should be back from his IR stint after the bye. Uh, he missed three games, then he's got the bye week, so like four weeks a after a hamstring strain should be good enough for him to roll. So those are two tight ends that might have been dropped in your league. I think that's all I got for y'all right now. So that being said, it's been said. All right. Uh, if you want the waiver wire exclusive actual article, go cop that bdg.store forward slash community. If you enjoyed the video, Hit the button that looks like this and hit the button that says subscribe so you can throw the D in it and you'll be subscribed to the channel. Put the notifications on so you know when we go live and uh, that's it. Love y'all and I shall see you tomorrow. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe trade target video on Wednesday. Maybe not though. You just never, you never ever know. But I love you and that you do know.